This tutorial covers the electrolysis of copper sulphate and also of some binary compounds and looks at how moles can be used in calculations to work out what mass of a product might be uh, deposited at one of the electrodes. The mass of a substance deposited during electrolysis depends on two factors, time and the current and altering these two will alter the amount of substance produced. To investigate this relationship in the lab you would use an electrolyte of copper sulphate and a copper cathode which you would weigh before and after electrolysis. A minimum of three runs of the experiment would need to be done. In the first experiment you would run it as a control with for example 0.4 amps running for 10 minutes or 600 seconds. You would weigh the cathode before and after the experiment and work out the increase in mass. The second experiment would use the same current 0.4 amps but would use a different time here 20 minutes or 1200 seconds. Comparing the results of these two experiments would show us the effect of a change in time on the mass of copper deposited. A third experiment would look at the effect of a change in current. This one has again 20 minutes or 1200 seconds but this time it would use 0.2 amps rather than 0. 4 amps. So the difference between experiment 2 and experiment 3 is the difference in current. In each of the three experiments the cathode or negative electrode gains mass as copper is deposited. But at the cathode the amount of copper made doubles as the time doubles and also doubles as the current doubles. During the electrolysis of copper 2 sulphate, copper is deposited at the cathode because copper ions gain two electrons to become copper atoms. At the anode, it depends on whether you are using inert or copper electrodes. In the experiment shown using copper electrodes, copper would have dissolved off the anode and into solution. If you had used inert carbon electrodes, the anode reaction would be here, which would be that hydroxide ions from the water would convert into oxygen gas and water. Now I must stress that the explanation for what happens in that experiment is beyond the syllabus, but here it comes anyway, just as background. We can say that one copper ion requires two electrons to form one copper atom which means that scaling up to moles one mole of copper ions would need two moles of electrons to form one mole of copper atoms. Now we can work out one mole of ions or one mole of atoms by a change in mass but how can we work out a mole of electrons? Well conveniently this has been done for us by Michael Faraday he discovered that one mole of electrons is equivalent to 96,500 coulombs. Leads us to think, well what's a coulomb then? Well one coulomb is the amount of electric charge transported in one second by one amp. So the number of coulombs here, labelled Q, is the number of amps, I, times the number of seconds, T. So if we want to double the number of moles of electrons, or the number of Faradays, we would have to either double the current or double the time. Now because the mass of copper deposited depends upon the number of electrons which flow, if we double the number of electrons we double the number of atoms of copper. So by doubling the flow of electrons, in other words the number of coulombs, we can double the mass of copper produced and again we can double that number of moles of electrons 
by either doubling the current or doubling the time. Right, returning back to the syllabus then, doubling the number of moles of electrons will double the number of moles of copper. And you can double the number of moles of electrons by either doubling the current or doubling the time. Here's a question then. During the electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate solution, a current of 0.4 amps was left running for 40 minutes. This made 0.316 grams of copper at the cathode. What mass of copper would be deposited at the cathode if 0.4 amps was running for 20 minutes? Well look, the difference between the first run and the second run, what is it? Well, the number of amps is the same. It's the number of minutes which is halved. So if the number of minutes is halved, that means that the number of moles of electrons will halve, which means that the mass of copper will halve. So halving the time will halve the mass. The mass goes down from 0.316 to 0.158 grams. Here's another question. In the electrolysis of silver nitrate, a current of 0.2 amps was used for one hour. This made 0.8 grams of silver. What mass of silver will be made using 0.1 amp for 30 minutes? Well here, the second time we're doing the experiment, we are halving the current and we're also halving the time. So the amount of copper produced will be one quarter of the original mass. One quarter of 0.8 is 0.2 grams of silver. And another practice question. In the electrolysis of copper 2 chloride using copper electrodes, a current of 0.8 amps was used for 25 minutes. This made 0.4 grams of copper. What would the mass be if a current of 0.4 amps had been used for 50 minutes? Here, between the first and the second run, the current has halved, but the time has doubled. Now, halving the current and doubling the time would cancel each other out, so the mass would be exactly the same, 0.4 grams. Here's a past paper question. Hannah investigates the electrolysis of aqueous potassium sulfate. Look at the apparatus she uses. Write down two factors that affect the amount of gas made when aqueous potassium sulfate is electrolyzed. Well, the amount of gas that you get produced in this experiment uh, would double if, for example, you doubled the current or if you doubled the time. So the two factors which affect the amount of gas produced are the current and the time. And that's the allowable answers on the mark scheme. Here's another question. Amy investigates the factors that affect the electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate solution. Look at the apparatus she uses. Well, she's using copper anode and cathode and a copper sulfate solution as her electrolyte. Amy finds the mass of the copper cathode. She then passes an electric current through the copper sulfate solution. After the electrolysis, she dries the cathode and finds its mass again. Amy repeats the electrolysis several times. She changes the time taken to do the electrolysis. She also changes the size of the current used. Look at her results table. In experiment 3, Amy also measures the mass of the anode before the electrolysis. The mass was 1.12 grams. Predict the mass of the anode at the end of the electrolysis. Use information from the table of results. Well, in experiment 3, the mass of the cathode has increased. And the amount of increase is 1.58 grams, take away 1.34 grams, which is 0.24 grams. Therefore, the anode should decrease by the same amount. Because when using copper electrodes, the cathode increases in mass but the anode decreases in mass by the same amount. So therefore that would be 1.12 grams take away 0.24 grams comes to 0.88 grams. What's the effect of increasing the time on the mass of copper made at the cathode? Well here we need to look at experiment 1 compared with experiment 
3. In experiment 1, we're using 2 amps for 180 seconds, and we get a total of 0.12 grams of copper made. In the second case, using double the amount of seconds, we get 0.24 grams made. So increasing the time, this will have the effect of it increases the mass of copper. What's the effect of increasing the current on the mass of copper made? Here we need to compare experiment 1 with experiment 2. Experiment 1 with 2 amps produces 0.12 grams of copper. Experiment 2 using the same number of seconds but using 4 amps produces 0.24 grams of copper. Therefore, increasing the current, it increases the mass of copper. At the anode, copper atoms lose electrons to form copper ion, Cu2+. Write down the symbol equation for this reaction using E- to represent an electron. We're here, we're starting off with Cu atoms, and we're losing two electrons to make Cu2 plus ions. Here are the answers and although the answer is that the mass increases with current and time, actually they also allow that it's directly proportional. So if you double the time, you double the mass of copper, you double the current, you double the mass of copper.